Hey guys, back here with another YouTube video. Today we are going to be doing a Series 8 team building guide. I've been seeing the kind of content you guys have been enjoying on the YouTube, so I wanted to give you a video that is going to help you guys kind of understand how to build in this format, and I'm going to break it down step by step with you guys. Um, if you guys are interested in any of the teams that we have built um, previously that were released in terms of rental codes, getting teams, access to the teams we build, make sure to check out our streams our twitch streams we stream all of these buildings live um, besides the ones that are obviously exclusive for subs um, also too the rental codes for these four teams are up the rental codes for these four teams will be up um, in our next video pretty much um, it'll be in our next like one or two videos so make sure to keep an eye out for that make sure to obviously subscribe like the channel everything and make sure to check out our uh, last video to see this also if you guys are interested in learning this on a one in one way we do I do offer coaching as well so make sure to check that out anyway so back to our Pokemon guide we're going to deconstruct the Xerneas team that we built on stream which you guys can see on Twitch and which you guys will see in the next video with its rental code in its entirety we're not going to be showing the rental code this time but it will be on our next video also if you join the discord you do get early access so it's honestly kind of beneficial just join the discord but yeah so basically um, we're going to say we call this Xerneas team building guide okay so now we go over here Right. Basically, when you're building a team, the main thing is kind of having a initial idea or concept. So my uh, initial idea with this was having Xerneas on the team. Obviously, I wanted a mon that could set up. I wanted a mon that could pressure. Xerneas is a very good restricted in terms of being able to set up. It uses it abuses power her basically to be able to set up Geomancy. Um, we're going to not do the items first, and it's just because of the way I like to do the team building process. So I will show you guys step by step how we do it. So. Basically, what I decided here is that I wanted to go with Xerneas. Um, this was the core of the team. This was the core of the idea. So the first thing that came to my head after that was kind of how do I want to support Xerneas setup? And this is something that's key on a lot of teams, even besides Xerneas. And it was basically I wanted to be able to let it set up Geomancy freely and also give it a lot of ways to kind of reduce damage so that it could uh, stick around longer and it could also just get that set up for free. So basically my next thought was immediately Incineroar. Incineroar, it's a great mon. It gets fake out pressure. It gets parting shot pressure and it can also snarl in some cases, not necessarily needed on this team, but it's still very useful. So that's something that we kept in mind there. The Incineroar um, ends is like Incineroar, Xerneas, Amoongus core is just like very common. Uh, Amoongus is gonna be the next thing we're adding here and I'm gonna explain why. I just kind of want to go through this step by step. Basically too, the nice thing about this is that there's um, solid type synergy. So obviously Incineroar weak to fighting type moves, Xerneas can swap into that. Xerneas weak to steel type moves, Incineroar can swap into that pretty comfortably. So it's starting to build up our kind of core of synergy with like our ability to kind of swap into things also kind of um, working together in terms of enabling Xerneas as setup so that's like very important um, we're going to be we're going to be doing this series for a bunch of different teams um, to kind of explain how you build around certain restricted so for this specific one we're going to be doing it around Xerneas if you guys would like to see more videos like this explaining how to build around other mods definitely make sure to let me know but yeah so that's the main thing we're going to be um, doing here to kind of uh, make sure that these get set up properly now we're going to add a Moongus. Moongus offers spore pressure for the team. This also helps versus opposing Xerneas. Oh my god, I gotta take a sip of water. Oh my god. <sighs> Alright. Anyways, back to that. Um, so basically, Moongus, you can Rage Powder, you can Spore, you can Clear Smog to shut down opposing Xerneas. It's pretty good in the Xerneas Mirror. Um, and that's kind of the main reasoning for Moongus on this team. The main thing is also too, you can, you know, like redirect to support the Xerneas. And, um, that's, that's kind of the nice thing about it. You have redirection, you have fake out pressure, you have intimidate, you have parting shot, right? And you can kind of reposition your Xerneas. So sometimes what you'll see a lot of players do is you'll see them lead, um, Xerneas and Incineroar. And then what they'll do is, is they'll uh, go for a protect parting shot turn one, and then they'll go into their Moongus so they can rage powder the next turn. And that's like the main benefit there. So then that's kind of the nice part there. You can also obviously lead Xerneas and Moongus, protect Spore or Rage Powder and uh, Geomancy. So there's a lot of ways to kind of take advantage of this pairing. So the next thing you'd kind of want to do is, uh, the next thing I wanted to do rather with this team was find a way to even reduce damage even more and to kind of increase like the pivoting that I could have on this team to let me reposition my Xerneas into a place where it can actually go for Geomancy pretty safely. So the next thing I thought of was actually Landorus. Um, and the main benefit of Landers is being able to U-turn in and out. Um, obviously, cycling intimidates with the Incineroar. So against like Zacian, you could get it down to minus two if you play correctly. So let's say you lead Xerneas and Incineroar into um, Zacian. You call that they're going to go for a Behemoth Blade. You protect the Xerneas. You parting shot off of it. They're minus one. 
Then you go into your landers, they're minus two, boom, you swap back in your Incineroar, they're minus three, and that's a free Xerneas setup. So there are a lot of different ways you can kind of take advantage of this pairing. Even if you wanted to be safer, you were worried about a close combat going into Incineroar or them calling you, protect Xerneas, swap in the landers, take the close combat on the landers, swap back in Incineroar, they're still minus two. They're not doing as much damage to your Xerneas. And you can run a bulky Xerneas to offset this. So that's basically the main benefit of these four together. Um, if you look at this team, it still has a really hard time breaking through steel types. So basically I wanted to address that in my next slot. And the main steel types that you kind of want to address with this team are going to be Metagross, obviously Necrozma Duskmane, Solgaleo, Kartana, right? So for me, I was like, okay, well, how do I do that while also dealing with my Calyrex matchup? Because if you look at this, um, Calyrex can go for Astral Barrage, which obviously can hit both Mons, and it does get around Amoongus's redirection. So you do want a better way to deal with that. So the next immediate thought I had to fix all of those issues was actually Hydreigon. So Hydreigon may seem a little questionable in a GS Cup format, but there are multiple reasons why it works on this team. For the most part, on Xerneas teams, you actually don't want to run something like Itapu Fini. You don't want to run Itapu anyways. Um, and for that reason, uh, it's actually like kind of nice because it uh, prevents you from making your build too linear. So Hydreigon here actually gives the build a lot more flexibility and it also gives us access to a strong uh, defensive core, which is Fairy Dragon Steel. Um, you guys will see the steel type we're going to be adding in a second. But basically, Hydreigon also has Levitate, which allows landers to go for Earthquakes next to it. And it also really suits the team in terms of being able to deal with those annoying steals and Calyrex that you don't like dealing with. Um, also, the Dragon type coverage is pretty decent versus a uh, few Restricteds and also just a strong staff to have access to on the team. And just the preventing preventing the redundancy of typings is kind of nice and the redundancy of weaknesses is kind of nice. So if you look at the team currently, right, like the weaknesses that you see carry over are things that the entire team can address. Um, and this is something we're going to actually fix with the Metagross slot. So the current weakness here that looks kind of bad would be the Ice weakness, right? Um, Hydreigon, Landorus, um, and Amoongus are weak to it. Um, and if you look, obviously, the fighting type weakness is patched by Xerneas, Landorus, and Amoongus, right? Um, so you'll see that, like, we're kind of building up the synergy on our team to kind of allow ourselves to have a little more options in terms of flexibility. And that's very important when it comes to just building a team in general, kind of having that flexibility. So the next thing you kind of want to do is, uh, or the next thing I wanted to do rather, is find a Mon that kind of filled that last slot. I wanted a Steel type because I knew this team would have trouble dealing with fairies if I didn't add a Steel type. Um, if you look at this, obviously we have a Moongus to stop opposing Xerneas, but sometimes that's not enough. Also, dealing with opposing Zacian still looks kind of rough right now because it can still hit you super effectively. Hydreigon's obviously pretty weak to Zacian, so what I decided to do was go with Metagross. So now basically you see we have our six. Um, if you look at this six, basically the benefit of running these is a few things so one um defensive synergy so we look over here we have two ground weak mons two levitators and then two neutral hits that's very good in terms of um sharing your weaknesses now if we're thinking about specific restricteds calyrex uh shadow rider we have hydreigon and incineroar for xerneas metagross amoongus and we also technically have incineroar to like disrupt it then you look at stuff like um zacian uh, you have Metagross, Landers, Incin, right? So you're seeing that we have answers for a lot of common restricteds. Eveltal obviously are restricted answers that, so that's good. Now we think about some certain mons that can come up a lot. Um, if like obviously it's not great if you don't have a matchup for Colossal, something that even did well in the recent Italian tour held. You have Hydreigon for with uh, potentially like Max Quake, right? Um, and you can also run Landers obviously for that. So there you see that we're kind of respecting a lot of different threats here with our building. The way we built our team allowed it to be more consistent in general with not only its typing and defensive synergy, but its coverage as well. And that's why we save our moves for last to kind of figure out what we're weak to, what we need to fix, and if there's anything else we need to change. So once you're happy with your six, basically, you can go into the next part of team building. Um, for Metagross specifically, we're going to want weakness policy. Um, the item weakness policy just makes a lot of sense. Uh, Metagross obviously benefits from the weakness policy, so it's just a super solid item to have. Xerni is pretty straightforward. Power Herb. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, basically, just allows it to kind of um, set up Geomancy and just threaten, uh, you know, obviously the opponent. Then over here, we're going to be running Life Orb on Hydreigon. We want to be able to do more damage to the opponent. It's just very solid. Um, and yeah, it's just super helpful in terms of like dealing more damage. Then when we look at Landers over here. So this Landers is going to be running Assault Vest. We basically want it to be able to sit in, take hits, and be able to U-turn out. Assault Vest allows you to do that, and that means we can invest more into bulk on this Landers, which means it can take a lot of hits. This also helps a little bit for the opposing Xerneas matchup, so that we could live Xerneas hits and invest more into bulk for that reason. 
so that's like the main benefit there then you go over here by the way if you guys are wondering what this towel is i literally just showered before this and like my hair is still wet so i'm like preventing my like neck from like getting super wet uh <laughs> but yeah so then we look um over here at the incineroar for the incineroar um basically the uh, main benefit of the Incineroar um, is kind of its ability to reposition and also its ability to kind of disrupt stuff like opposing Amoongus, opposing grass types, that kind of stuff. So if you look over here, um, Safety Goggles Incineroar makes a lot of sense. Safety Goggles is able to let you swap into stuff like Spore. It's able to let you swap into stuff like Sleep Powder or deal with opposing Venusaurs, which are still annoying for this team and let you part and shop. So it's definitely super solid, definitely something that is good for this team. Then over here, Amoongus, I always like Koba Berry on Amoongus. Sometimes Sash is a viable item. Koba Berry is very good here because like there's a lot of Airstream in the format still, so it's just like a very solid item. So now we can kind of start going through our moves, right? So Metagross, we're going to want Iron Head. Um, Iron Head just a very good coverage move. Stomping Tantrum, also a very good coverage move. Um, you can boost uh, the defenses of Xerneas with Steel Spike. You can boost the special defense with, um, what's it called? Uh, max quake basically so that's just like the super helpful part there so for the last move you have a couple of different options i still like rock slide so you don't get walled by certain things that are like flying obviously um rock slide is also very good for the kind of common moltres that tries to set up right now so you can obviously just go for a rock fall there rock fall also is great at pinning um incineroars because sometimes you know obviously they're going to swamp to try and be immune to your ground hit so your max rock fall will cover for that and that's just like a super helpful thing to do also gives you some weather control to kind of disrupt the opponent's weather which is also very nice when we look over here at Xerneas, Xerneas movesets are usually pretty straightforward. Sometimes they opt to run Thunderbolt, but for the most part, I don't think that's super great. I usually prefer Dazzling Gleam. Spread spread moves with Xerneas are just very good. Geomancy Protect. Now, it may seem a little weird that you're running like single fairy coverage, but this is always how it's been run. Reason being, um, its fairy coverage is very strong, even on not very effective hits. This does get a 1.3 power boost plus stab, so you have to keep that in consideration to the point where it's like hitting a lot of the resisted hits neutrally um essentially neutrally right if you like discount the fact that there's like no fairy aura and then you discount like the stab it's basically hitting things like for a little bit more than they uh normally would if i'm calculating that correctly in my head and even then like obviously with the geomancy boost you're still gonna be hitting pretty hard so like they have to respect that um we go over to hydreigon um basically hydreigon is pretty straightforward we want draco meteor we want earth power and we want dark pulse Basically, just very good moves to take advantage of with the Hydreigon. I actually had run Flamethrower on this earlier, but then I lost to a Colossal, so I was like, I'm running Earth Power. Um, Earth Power is also just better because, like, it still covers a lot of the seals that you're worried about um, and, like, a lot of stuff like Colossal, which can just, like, pop up and be annoying. Then we look over here. Landorus is pretty solid as well. Basically, for Landorus, the main benefit um, is that it can obviously cycle inside and out. It's really good at walling ground on. It's really good at dealing with Venusaur, assuming no sleep powder. And it can obviously spread intimidates, which is pretty useful. So U-turn is obviously pretty good here. Fly is obviously pretty good here. Max air streams. Um, U-turn to reposition. Earthquake. Rock slide. So then we go to Incineroar. I always say the mandatory moves on Incineroar, unless your assault vests are going to be flare blitz, parting shot, and fake out. Um, when it comes to the last move on this team... Uh, the main thing I could see being a little annoying for this team would be opposing Amoongus, so I kind of like the idea of Taunt here. You can also justify going for Snarl, but I kind of prefer Taunt. Um, that being said, though, let me make sure I'm making the correct choice here, because let me check, double check the um, build that I used in the previous one, because I may have used Snarl. No, I used Taunt. Okay, cool. The main reason why there would have been maybe a small justification for using that is because, um, obviously Calyrex Ghost Rider, but we do have a Hydreigon, so it makes sense that we went with uh, Taunt here. I just wanted to double check and make sure that um, that was consistent throughout because I don't want to give like a different version of the team than the one that's going to be put on the rental codes. So um, you can see that's kind of the main process for getting this move set together. Then we go over here, clear smog on Amoongus. This is just really good at shutting down Geomancy Xerneas um, and just any kind of setup restricted. Rage Powder, Redirection, obviously. Spore, obvious. Sleep, Protect. So this helps keep your Amoongus alive. Um, in terms of the moves, I think this pretty much wraps up everything. And if you guys always have questions, you can always leave it in the description. Make sure to let me know if you guys would like to see more of the series. Hopefully, this is helpful for you. Um, I am I am kind of uh, liking doing this more in-depth content guide. So make sure to let me know how you like it. And make sure to let me know what restricted you'd like to see me build with next to kind of give you guys an example and kind of explain. So we look over here. Um, we see... Uh, what's it called? Metagross. So basically now we're going to go into EVs. So when you're EVing, the main thing to keep in mind is like what speed tier do I want to hit? So for me, 
Obviously, Charizard looks a little annoying for this team, if you just look at, like, obviously the composition, besides Hydreigon. So, after an Airstream, I'd kind of like to outspeed it with Metagross, just so I can get a Rock Slide off. Also, outspeeding Urshifu is kind of useful, because, like, in some cases, like, maybe Urshifu is down to its Sash, and you want to pick it off, like, after it gets Airstreamed. So, being, uh, being 172 speed allows you to outspeed that. The other option you have is going a bit slower. Um, unfortunately, here's the thing, right? So when you're considering these speed tiers, you need to think about it. What is more relative to happen? So if you're trying to deal with the Charizard, are you really going to be bringing Metagross and Airstreaming with it? Probably not, right? So in that case, it makes sense to lower the speed down. We're going to 97 because most Incineroars kind of creep around the like 80 to like 94 speed tier, right? And then some go 95 and some people go 95 to creep it and some people go 96 to creep those people so we're going 97 speed to kind of be ahead of everyone then we look over here the next thing that you want to do is kind of hit one of the bumps so if you guys don't know what bumps are bumps are essentially points on your stat investment for your boosted stat so in this case uh, our attack because we're adamant right where you get two points on your stats instead of one so if we scroll up and you guys look here one two so you'll see it's only going up by one now if you look over here boom it goes up by two so you're aiming for one of these because it helps you optimize your investments and get more out of your evs so we're going to be going for the max bump here if you don't know how often these evs happen by the way i go over all this in coaching if you guys don't understand any of this you guys are interested in learning more about the game and stuff like this you can make sure to check out my coaching um where i actually offer kind of ways to um ways to kind of like uh do this and i have guides and everything for you guys so it's super helpful um, but yeah, so you look over here, we're going to hit the final bump, uh, bumps happen every 80 EVs. So 116, obviously you'll see the bump is here, 80 EVs after 196 to 198, 80 EVs back 174, 176. So we're going to be aiming for that final bump over here. Um, just to kind of optimize our investment. We're going to put the rest into HP. Do we just want our HP to be as high as possible? Metagross, it's not the highest HP. So it's just kind of nice to have it as bulky as possible. Then 4-4. Four, four. Now, some people may be wondering, okay, well, why did you do that instead of just doing this or instead of putting it in the speed? So if you look at how much we get out of those ADVs when we invest in either of these stats, we only get one, right? Now, instead of just getting one out of that, we can optimize our EV investment by investing four and four. As you can see, that still gives us one in each stat, which is pretty nice. So we get we get two EVs instead of, or two stat points essentially instead of one. So that's just pretty helpful there. And we look at Xerneas. So Xerneas is a specific example of where I wanted to calc for a specific damage calculation. I went 127 speed on the Xerneas. The main reason being, I wanted to outspeed pretty much everyone going at the 126 speed tier with an airstream that outspeeds Cinderace. And that's the speed our Landers is going at. So I wanted to go um, for 127. So that would be one point faster than Landers. And if we check our old team, I'm pretty sure this will still serve true. Yep, we'll see 116 over there, 68. So this went 128. Um, we'll go through the exact EVs to see where, um, exactly I mix that up. I think, oh yeah, it's because, so basically the main logic there is, so our Landers is 126, right? Some people creep above those people creeping Cinderace with Airstreams at 127. So we went 128 basically. That's the main logic there. Then, um, four EVs here. So we don't waste because we know we're going to do a five way investment. Um, then. We're going to go modest here. I wanted to aim for the highest bump so Xerneas would do as much damage as possible. So you'll see this is the highest bump over here. Then um, I basically had a specific damage calculation in mind, which is why I had this specific a bit of remaining EVs involved. So if you look over here, we're going to open up and put Xerneas in here. Then we're going to put Groudon in here. So basically what I was calculating for on the Xerneas or what I wanted was to be able to live like Groudon Precipice Blades really well. So if you look over here, the way I actually did the investment was so that we could live a plus two Groudon Precipice Blades guaranteed on this Xerneas. And when in Dynamax, we would get three hit KO'd by it. So if we go over here, we give Groudon Precipice Blades, which he has right here. You'll see that Precipice Blades does exactly, um, it does exactly a three hit KO. Now, if we give him plus two, guaranteed to live. So that's like, that's like the main benefit there. Then in max, guaranteed three hit. So it's like just very solid for Xerneas. That, that's what I wanted to accomplish with the spread. So, and also too, obviously the fact that we have Intimidate really supports this and makes it like even better. That's like worst case scenario. Like if somehow they find a way to set up, which is like near impossible considering the fact that we have double Intimidate. So it's just like very, very helpful in general. But yeah, so then 
we go over here to our hydrogen. How did we want to be this hydrogen? Basically, all I wanted it to do was to um, like, so there's there's basically a few ways you can mess around with these speed tiers. So if we go back and we reference our one that we built on stream, you'll see that it actually hits 144 speed. So Modest Kyogre goes at 143 uh, speed, um, if I remember correctly. The way you can always double check this, go in here, um, VGC 2021, Kyogre, boom, boom, 142. So now the reason why we went 144, if I remember correctly, that's what was invested on the side dragon is because people will obviously creep that at 143. So we're just one point above them at what's it called? 100. There you go. Uh, and then basically what we want to do with our remaining investment, we wanted to optimize for life orb. Now, if you guys don't know how to optimize for life orb, uh, calculator, Google, wow, I can spell, I swear. Okay. Well, we're going to do that. Okay, so now we look over here, right? Basically, you guys are wondering, okay, so how are we going to, like, how, like, how does this work? How are you optimizing your life orb chip? Basically, life orb chip divides by 10. So basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get as much HP out of the HP stat without, um, essentially without uh, kind of ruining your, um, your life orb world. So Pokemon always rounds down in its damage calculation, correct? So basically here... Um, if we get our hydrogen to 169 nice um, HP, right, and we divide that by 10, you'll see that it says it's doing 16.9 damage. But because Pokemon rounds down, it's only doing 16 points of health. So that means we would never want to hit 170 exactly, because that would mean that we are taking exactly 17 points of damage and moving us up in the damage tick, which makes no sense. However, if we wanted to invest more HP than less in our hydrogen, we can go up to 189 while still retaining a good amount of EVs for our special attack, uh, special attack investment, right? And we can hit 189. Now, if you're looking, you can always double check, but if you always end in 9, you always optimize your life orb damage. You do that, 18.9. So you're only taking 18 points of damage while getting as much HP as possible without increasing your tick. So that's like the main that's like the main benefit there. Also, too, 189 is really close to optimizing your sand chip. If you look at sand chip, uh, you can divide by 16. So it's also the same number for grassy terrain and i'll get into that on the team when we have like rillaboom but basically here like sand and hail chip is the main thing that would be affecting hydrogen so we're more concerned about that if you do 189 divided by 16 you'll see that it does 11.8 um damage so basically 11 tick um this is pretty good actually because you're going to be taking like not as much damage from hail and you're getting more hp in relation to it so the exact number where the tick increases for um hail is actually 192 so you'll see that increases the tick. So we're basically one number off of like, or like, yeah, two numbers off of like completely optimizing our tick. But like, obviously, if we did that, then we would be taking more damage from life orb. So obviously, we don't want to do that. Hence why our EVs are like this. Now you look over here, Landorus, basically, you want it to be pretty bulky because it's uh, meant to be like kind of repositioning itself. Speed wise, we wanted it to be faster than Cinderace after an airstream, right? Um, you see four EVs here. 20 EVs were just the remaining EVs we had left after we kind of hit all the numbers we wanted to. Um, you see over here, we went for 116. This is our bump on our nature boosted stat. And then you'll see we went max HP here. Basically, this was just to make sure our landers was pretty bulky. It could just stick around. There were no specific damage calculations here, just more so optimizing for bulk. So yeah, uh, and the speed here we wanted, obviously. Then you go over here to Incineroar. So for our Incineroar, we basically just wanted an Incineroar that was going to be a bit faster for the meta. I went careful because I wanted it to be a little more specially defensive because obviously Xerneas Dazzling Gleam is in the format. Xerneas Moonblast is in the format, so it's just something you want to respect. Um, you won't you won't live a Xerneas Moonblast, but the whole point is to just take like Dazzling Gleams fairly well while also still having enough defense to kind of take Grout on Precipice Blades well. So basically here, if you look at how much we are investing, you'll see this is our EV spread. Basically, this EV spread outspeeds most common Incineroars for the most part, unless they're like very, very fast, um, which obviously our Metagross was intended to beat. Then over here, we hit our special defensive bump because obviously this is our plus boosted stat, right? So you're going to see we're over here at 132, so 130, 132. Then um, over here on our... Um, defense basically this was uh this was basically an older incineroar spread i use i just really like the speed turn i really like the special defense so i just kind of carried that over and then i just optimized for uh, what's it called our um, hp and our defenses so that was just the main goal there nothing too crazy on this spread this was just a generally just optimized spread 
but yeah that was pretty much it then over here on amoongus um we're going careful the main reasoning why is because we wanted to um hit we basically wanted our amoongus to be pretty specially defensive considering xerneas is in the attack not careful what am i saying sassy um we wanted to be min speed then obviously we go over here rest into hp and then uh, filling out our defenses so basically we wanted to hit at the second bump we didn't want to go all the way up because that would be a bit overkill in the amoongus we want the amoongus to still have some defense left and 221 we don't have to worry about optimizing sand or hail at all on that so yeah that's the main benefit there and that's kind of how we got the ev spread for this amoongus so hopefully this made sense to you guys um uh, the main thing that i want to discuss in this section before we kind of close this video off is kind of about how this team synergizes together so basically you can tell that there are a few main modes on this team basically xerneas hydragon mode you can break through annoying steals and you can um kind of support xerneas in that way but you also have a way to kind of position the xerneas into a better position with landorus incineroar obviously you can cycle intimidates you can cycle um u-turns right and parting shots to kind of get yourself in a good position and you can also get amoongus in to go for rage powder support the xerneas you can also use amoongus plus hydragon so that you can be very offensive and not be pressured by fairy types and you can also use metagross obviously next to xerneas to kind of boost up with steel spikes and quake so that's kind of the main synergy there on the team and obviously you can go obviously because um the hydrogen's faster than xerneas you can go for max darkness plus like fairy moves so those are like the main benefits there that's kind of the idea with the team if you guys are looking for the rental code for this team um and you guys want to see obviously um kind of the actual like um more explanation of this team and like some other teams that you guys saw earlier in the video uh, make sure to check out our next video that's going to be coming out it's going to be uh, four more rental teams for you guys to take advantage of also make sure to check out coaching if you guys would like to learn how to build like this and kind of like get into the thought process i give out guides during coaching kind of help you guys out so i definitely think it's a super good resource to take advantage of if you are able so definitely do that and also make sure to join discord because the discord gets access to all these teams earlier so it's just a solid perk there as well and we do all the building on our twitch streams pretty much so make sure to check that out as well um, we also do battling on there so I, where i talk about battling with you guys so make sure to check that out as well but thank you guys for all the support i super appreciate all of you guys and hopefully this was helpful so thank you guys again make sure to support the video share with your friends who are struggling how to build in series 8 hopefully this helps you guys and this is how to play a xerneas or build a xerneas team and we will be doing more restricted in the future kind of doing more guides like this so make sure to let me know uh what kind of guide you would like to see next or what pokemon you'd like to see me build around next okay guys thank you again and i will see you guys on the next video peace out